All right, so this is really revision of theoretical probability. You've seen all of this stuff before, but we are going to put some uh, slightly more sophisticated um, notation into it so you can start talking about it at a, at a slightly higher level. All right, so first thing we need to talk about, which you've definitely done before, is sample space. All right, so sample space in a nutshell is really all possible outcomes, or at least all possible outcomes under consideration. Um, and when you think about that, sample space is actually the universal set. It's all of the possible things that can happen. It's all the students in the classroom. It's all of the numbers on a dice. It's all of the sides of a, of a coin, heads or, or tails. So depending on the thing you might be interested in, the universal set might be all of the numbers on the dice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It might be all of the outcomes available if you toss two coins. So you might get heads, heads, or heads, tails, or tails, heads, or tails, tails. Those are the only four things that can happen if you flip a coin barring it landing on its edge or something weird like that. So, sample space, you've talked about it being all possible outcomes. This is probably the first time you've ever talked about it being the universal set. So the next thing we need to talk about are events. And events are what we would call a uh, subset of the universal set, so or a subset of the sample space. So, for instance, let's say you're playing a game with dice, uh, and you win if you get a 5 or a 6. So the winning event is 5 or 6. And 5 or 6 is a subset of the universal set. All right, so a subset of the universal set. So let's say you're playing that dice game, then the subset, the winning subset, is 5 or 6. Or if you're playing this game with dice, then the winning uh, with coins, sorry, then the winning subset might only be head head. So these are sample spaces, whereas these are called events. And an event is a subset of a sample space. So in these, all of the outcomes are equally likely. And if all of your outcomes are equally likely, then we can find the probability of whatever that outcome is. Uh, let's call the outcome A. is going to be equal to the size of or the number of things in subset A over the size of the universal set. So, for instance, the probability of winning this uh, dice game, the probability of getting, sorry, the probability of getting a 5 or a 6 is equal to the size of that sample space 2 over the size of the uh, universal set 6. In other words, 1 over 3. All right, so you've seen that before. That's the formula for theoretical probability. You may not have seen it written with this uh, notation before. I might write it with some different notation that you may be more familiar with. So the probability of some event happening is equal to the size of the events, samples, uh, events subset over the size of the sample space. That formula is identical to uh, that formula. This formula is just using some slightly more sophisticated mathematical uh, notation to make the same point. So finishing with a really quick example, uh, find the probability of pulling a heart from a deck of cards. Uh, now you should know what a deck of cards looks like. You should know how many hearts there are in a deck of cards. If you aren't, you probably need to familiarize yourself with it. Using our, uh, using our formula, the probability of pulling a heart out of a deck of cards is equal to the number of hearts in a deck of cards divided by the size of the sample space. In other words, how many cards there are in a deck. I can tell you that the number of hearts in a deck is 13, and the total number of cards in a deck is 52, if we don't include the jokers, which we're not going to. And that simplifies down to 1 in 
before. All right, you've definitely done this stuff before. We're just using some new terminology here, and we're just using some new terminology. The sample space is going to be our universal set, and the events are going to be a subset of that universal set.